Greetings and salutations, folks. My name is Nick, and welcome to Tex Murphy Overseer, a game in which I am fairly confident it might actually function uh, to a degree. Um, this is a game that is famous and notorious for its non functionality. So, getting it to work to some degree is impressive enough. Um, so we're just going to go with that, hope for the best. If I run into problems, I will try not to panic. In the meantime, let us begin. Uh, let's start a new game. Um, I've started up a couple new games just to try it out, and oh my gosh, what is going on up there? Um, we're going to choose Gamer simply because, let's see. Hints are available, but you can receive extra bonus points for successfully completing puzzles. Uh, I wonder if that means there are more puzzles available? Uh, because that's the thing with the Pandora Directive, is that had more stuff available in gamer mode, but because I think of the rushed uh, development of this game, this might not be the case. I find it interesting how, uh, like, these games tend to put their uh, bigger actors uh, front and center, whereas the main actors are usually kind of settled more towards the back. Um, like, Susan Barnes and Chris Jones come towards the end, even though usually the, like, the bigger actors are usually, like, guest stars in this story. Like, Michael York would be considered more of, like, guest star in the series, whereas Chris Jones would be more of that regular. My life was not. Things could get worse and worse. This almost has a Mission Impossible-esque kind of opening. Mission Impossible shows tend to open with, like, random clips of, uh, what's going to happen in the story itself. Also, this lady who doesn't show up in the game. Whereas, like, here you get almost this kind of strange, uh, bizarre dreamscape. That also kind of hints as to what comes next, because technically it all happened before. Tex? Are you okay? Sit up for a minute in the camera. Uh, I'm gonna have to give you a pretty fair warning, Chelsea. I know you're a strong woman, Chelsea, but even you've got your limits. Quit stalling. I want to see the real you. All right. Okay, okay. Hope you got your smelling salts handy. Is that a copy of Playbub on your bed there, Ch there, Tex? You know, my brother had a mask just like that that he wore to all the Halloween parties. He always won a prize. Well. Yeah? Well, after a hot bath, an apricot facial, and a little makeup... You're going to be eating your heart out there, darling. Yeah, you don't have time for any of those things. Our date starts in exactly 12 minutes. Lucky for you, there is a one-hour grace period. Well, that is very kind of you for providing said grace period. Thanks, Chelsea. You're the only one who really understands me. So what are we doing tonight? It's a surprise. 
Um, what should I wear? Well, it's not a formal surprise, is it? Because my tux, it's at the dry cleaners. No, no monkey suit required. Does Tex even own a tux other than his usual collection of trench coats and sneakers? All right. Well, I sure hope it's bowling, because I just got my ball waxed. No, we're not going to the Ten Pin Palace, and we're not having chili dogs either. If we're not doing any of those things, what is there left in life? Make yourself beautiful as quick as you can and zip on over here. I'll be waiting. Uh, sorry I'm late. Well, at least you're here. Come on in, let me take your hat and your coat. It's Chelsea's attitude that makes me question whether the uh, Lombard Street you know, ending... You light, you kind of look like a princess. Uh, or should I say the ending that's featured in the so Pandora directive the is canon. Like happy, grumpy, or dopey. Because, like, if she leaves to, to go out with... Uh... But hey, I'll tell you what. I put on a fresh shirt. I'm wearing the tie you asked me to wear. A couple of with the hologram of Clark Gable, right like, okay. at what point do they reconcile? Because it seems as though there is some heavy reconciliation. Can't seem to get a decent night's sleep. Are you still having those nightmares? Yeah, pretty much. Well, I think if you kept a little bit more normal hours and you ate a decent meal every now and again, you might look and feel a lot better. And that's why we have an 8 o'clock reservation at the Golden Pagoda. Well, <clears throat> since you got to pick the restaurant, maybe I could be in charge of the uh, early evening entertainment. Uh, because if we... Tex, honey, listen. I, I don't want you to think that I'm not interested. I am. It's just that I think that we have some things that we really need to discuss first. So the, the reconciliation only got so far. I just think it would be nice if our relationship could go further. What, like uh, all the way to second base? Oh. No. All I'm talking about is the ability to commit to something that has the potential to, to make us both very happy. It's about Sylvia, isn't it? No, and it's not about marriage. It's, it's about that one thing that, that prevents us from being close. What does Sylvia have to do with you and me? You know, Tex, she didn't okay. actually mention Sylvia. Okay, if you really want to know, I'll tell you. But keep in mind that six years ago, I was pretty much an idiot. The colonel had just fired me from his detective agency because I thought everything had to be done by the book. Literally. Well, being the naive optimist that I was, I decided to go into business for myself and become a big success. As it turned out, I was about to learn some even harder lessons. There I was in my shiny new office with all the trimmings up to my ears in debt. Weeks had gone by and I was still waiting around for my first client to show up. I figured I'd have more work than I could handle on a big city like New San Francisco. And I was just starting to feel like a tiny bug on the windshield. Yeah, Chelsea, you wouldn't believe it, but I had a really nice office. Let me tell you about it. All right, let's take a look around Tex's office. Also, something that I completely forgot about uh, Overseer is that you, you can move and look at things at the same time. Uh, it's still not the freedom of modern day, like, uh, mouse look, but it's a start. The guy who sold me my stone mask said either they were a fertility charm or would curse me to lifelong poverty and a violent death. Live dangerously, I say. All right. Looks like the latest issue of Boyd's Life has arrived. I wonder what that crazy boy is up to this month. Oh, Boyd's Life. Annual fishing issue. I wonder what those twins are up to this month. And then we have our inventory. 
By the way, it's probably going to take me a little while to figure out the exact uh, controls that I've actually customized for myself. One hundred one pickup lines that really work. Mutant fish, catch them before they catch you. Links twenty thirty seven, the ultimate golf game, a magazine for men. Oh, and now it's gone. Extreme Sports Illustrated is pretty cutting edge. The last issue had an article on ultimate chess: thirty men and two women in a literal fight to the death. Uh, let's see, what button did I put for that? Okay. I fill my ashtray with candy in hopes that visitors will forego the dangers of smoking in favor of good, wholesome, processed sugar. Mm-mm. What every growing body needs. V.I. Rules is my Bible. Twenty tried and true aphorisms with plenty of blank pages to add your own. I've come up with 17 others so far. You know, that's the thing. If there are blank pages to add in your own rules... Then are they really rules, or are they really guidelines for yourself? If uh, there's room for modification, then there is room to change what's on the page to fit your own needs. The colonel told me this book was for idiots, but I found these words of wisdom to be both inspiring and instructive. All right, let's look down. Anything in these cabinets? Uh, basically, in order to continue the story, we're looking for a copy of, uh, I think, Parcheesi, which is in Texas' bedroom. The rich cherrywood finish of my new desk presents an image of stability and success to my clients. manuals for the phone and fax machine you know technical stuff very important i just got this phone and it came with a free two-week subscription to the american information database i can request data on my cases and it will be faxed to my office immediately all right let's close these drawers um reset ourselves there we go Nothing refreshes like cool, clear water. Good old-fashioned agua. And then we've got our little perpetual the motion perpetual machine. Motion just goes on and on and on. Reminds me of my crazy Uncle Cadmus. Um. I think the perpetual motion machine is kind of broken. It is defying physics. Um, pointless trivia. In my attempts to get this game to work, uh, I ended up with various bugs, including one that made a lot of the textures see-through. So I was actually able to see that there was an item in here without even opening it up. Buddy. The only pet I've ever had. His name is Raymond. Tech sounds surprised that uh, the the mouse the mouse's name is Raymond. And I think that's it for these filing cabinets. Um. Oh. Slowly turn around. Welcome to the American Information Database. We hope you enjoy your free two-week trial subscription. Our new voice recognition interface makes requesting information more convenient than ever before. Simply tell us the topic you want researched. The request will be immediately transmitted to our central database. Any available information will be sent, usually within seconds, to your fax number. What topic would you like us to research? You know, it would have been interesting if, like, the trial uh, for the American Information Database ended in the middle of a uh, Texas case. A search for information on Tex Murphy has been initiated. What other topic would you like us to research? Thank you for using the American Information Database. Goodbye.
Tex Murphy, graduated University of Investigation of Utah, received private investigator's license, 2032, worked for Dobbs Investigative Services, 2033 to 36, received personal business license, 2037, signed one-year lease at Business Complex, 813 4th Street, New San Francisco. So not much to say. You can still use the mouse to move, but really at this point, why would you? These are all biographies of Wayne Newton. I don't know why people always found him so fascinating. Why do you have so many biographies of Wayne Newton then? Well, I'm not sure why, but this sculpture is called Every Day is Sunday to a Bird. Yeah, that's our score. There's also a uh, menu at the bottom of the screen, but I noticed if I activate the menu at the bottom of the screen, it tends to cause some it's graphical glitches. Every country in the world that begins with A. It's the Linda Goodman Sun Sign series, complete with a Leo bookend. Made these vases in my high school pottery class. It's the easiest B minus I ever got. I use this tape to measure my success. I've just got to dust it off and it'll work like a charm. The Manly Brand. The guy who sold me my stone mask said either they were a fertility charm or would curse me to lifelong poverty and a violent death. Live dangerously, I say. Oh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this. Some people have power ties. I have power plants. Um, I'll probably at some point use a a walkthrough or game fact if i get really really stuck i'm going to try to avoid it this is where letters of recommendation and thank yous from clients will go oops this letter from the colonel's been misfiled i'll try to avoid it but i admit like there's probably going to be certain puzzles that i'm going to have a lot of trouble on so there you go Murphy, I thought I'd write this note to wish you well in your new venture. Also, you might think I still hate your guts for that little stunt you pulled on me with the ethics board. As it turns out, a few of my friends at the SFPD, among others, were able to help me clear things up and get my PI license reinstated. So other than the character smearing and the public humiliation, everything's worked out fine. And I do still hate your guts, you ungrateful two-faced little turd. I put a lot of trust in you, took you under my wing, showed you the ropes of business. And for what, a knife in the back. A word of advice, you're going to learn that not everything is black and white. Sometimes you have to bend the rules a little to make them work right. And even more important, never betray your friends. That kind of thing comes back to haunt you. So again, good luck running your own agency. If anyone ever needed it, it's you. And don't expect me to send any business your way. I don't like seeing people waste their money. The Colonel. Um, Let's lower myself a little bit. Humphrey Bogart, my one true inspiration. Ah, there we go. Ah, the Royal Game of India. In my book, Parcheesi, Twister, and Ms. Pac-Man are the triumvirate of competitive gaming. So now that we have our... ...thing that I refuse to skimp on. It's the finest cot that money can buy. So that is what we need to progress. But for now, let's take a look Save around our room. Cold duck for a special romantic dinner. All of the flavor, none of the mind-numbing alcohol. Oh, Tex, such an idealist. This holds all four of my color-coordinated outfits. When it comes to fashionable attire, I believe in quality over quantity. <laughs> uh oh, only one pair left. I better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's play some Parcheesi. Well, five would be nice here. I've never actually played Parcheesi. Also, notice how this uh, door seems to highlight her knees, her stomach, and her face. So if you're a knees, stomach, face fetishist, that door is for you. 
Are you the private investigator? Oh, that's what someone painted on the door. I'll take that as a yes. I'd like to hire you, if you're available. Well, it just so happens that I am. What can I do for you, Ms. Linsky. But I'd prefer if you called me Sylvia. Okay, Sylvia. I'm Tex Murphy. Have a seat. I'm sorry if I disturbed your game. <sighs> well, that's all right. I was losing anyway. Would you like one? No, actually, there's a rumor going around that uh, those things are bad for you. And that rumor started 30 years from now? Or did, was, was there some degree of misinformation in between now and the Third World War? Lots of things are bad for you. That doesn't stop me from enjoying them. So, uh, why are you in the market for a PI? That line sounds better My until you think about Kyle it. Linsky died a week ago. I'm sorry to hear that. The police think it's suicide. I believe they're wrong. Well, the police are usually pretty good in matters like this. I mean, I can't believe they'd make that big a mistake. My father wasn't suicidal, and I'll pay you to prove it. Okay. Um, I'll take money. <laughs> your father's name is... Sorry, what? Carl Linsky. Okay. Well, if we rule out the suicide, that leaves three other ways to go. I mean, it could have been an accident, or uh, natural causes, or it could have been murder. The police say that they have witnesses that saw him jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, I guess that rules out the first two, then. So you think your father was murdered? He didn't kill himself, I know it. Look, if I take your case, you gotta understand there's no money back guarantee. And it doesn't sound real promising. I just don't know what else to do. Who's the officer in charge? The detective's name is Eve Clements. All right, I'll, I'll go down and I'll talk to her. We can get together later and I'll tell you what I found out. I'm staying at my father's house. Here's the address. Now, about the money up front. How much do you need? Because I haven't got a lot. I'm running a special this week. If I decide not to take your case, there isn't going to be any charge. Mm. Thank you. I'll be waiting. It's nice to meet you, Sylvia. No charge, Tex. You sucker. All right, uh, let's bring up the uh, information database. We need to find out about a few people. We want to know about Sylvia Linsky. Sylvia Linsky has been initiated. What other topic would you like us to research? We want to know about Detective Eve Clements. Detective Eve Clements has been initiated. What other topic would you like us to research? And we want to know about Carl Linsky. Information on Carl Linsky has been initiated. What other topic would you like us to research? We are done. Thank you for using the American Information Database. Goodbye. All right. Carl Linsky, uh, 1977, Brainerd, Minnesota, graduated University of Minnesota, 1999, graduated Harvard Medical School, 2004, worked at Boston General, 2005 to 10, North Hill Clinic, 2011 to present, married, 2011, divorced, 2014, winner of numerous professional and citizenship awards, published author, committed suicide, November 8th, 2037, survived by daughter, Sylvia. 
Sylvia Linsky, 2011, Eureka, California, attended Stanford 2030-31, three misdemeanor convictions, shoplifting, drunk driving, assaulting an officer, current address unlisted. Although I suppose, like, that is an extension of that one line of hers. Just because it's bad for you doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. Just because any of these things are bad for you has not seemed to stop her. Eve Clements, 1993, San Francisco, California, graduated Cal State Santa Barbara with a criminology degree, joined SFPD 2018, numerous decorations, promoted to Lieutenant 2032. All right, let us save our game and travel to see um, talk to Eve Clements. We got Carl Linsky's house, Eve Clements. Let's go there because we need to talk to her and then go to Sylvia and hopefully get paid texts. You need money. It doesn't sound like a very promising start. Also, well, like I said, this I is a very Blade Runner back. shot. Pretty desperate for a case. I knew Detective Clements and figured I'd pay her a visit. The only problem was she and the Colonel were pretty tight, and like I told you. I'd gotten the colonel in some trouble not long before. <laughs> Get out! You busy? If it isn't Tex Murphy. Does everybody talk like they're in a they're talking through a filter? Sold out any fellow PIs lately? Um Oh yeah, four this week. Oh you bet. Ah. Three this week alone. You know, the last thing I need is some pansy PI wasting my time. Um make an offer she couldn't freeze, excuse me. Uh, make an offer she shouldn't refuse. Well, you know, I'd be willing to trade a nice shoulder rub for some information. Give me one good reason why I should do any favors for you. Um, resort to the good book? Absolutely Fabio, or resort to charity? Absolute Fabio. Because you're an extremely beautiful woman, and I'm desperately in love. That's not gonna work. <laughs> Um, Charity, Leniency, The Good Book. Charity. Listen, I just went into business for myself, and I'm kind of relying on people like you to help me out. All right, Murphy. You're just lucky you caught me in a charitable mood. But be quick about it. All right, um... Tell me about Tex Murphy. The Colonel seems to think you've got the potential to be a good PI. Once you wake up to reality and get your priorities straight. Uh, Detective Eve Clements, tell me about yourself. Also, I just am um, learning that Detective Eve Clements, played by Silvana. Gallardo, she passed away in 2012. And I feel like that is going to be a running theme for a little bit of this game. Uh, especially since Henry Darrow, uh, the actor who played as Sonny Fletcher in this game, has recently passed. I'm willing to help you out because you're just getting started in the business. But don't abuse the privilege. Uh, tell me about Carl Linsky. Six witnesses saw Linsky take the dive. Their stories matched up and they all checked out. And they all ID'd Linsky? Not exactly. None of them were close enough to make an absolutely positive ID, but they described his general appearance, build, and clothing. Body wasn't found for a couple of days. Wasn't in the best shape when we fished it out of the bay. But we were able to make an identification using the personal effects found on the body. 
Um, let's see. Linsky's autopsy. Coroner said the cause of death was drowning. No other injuries. Though there was a scar back here. Linsky probably had surgery done recently. That's all. Are there any records of said surgery? We didn't follow it up since it had nothing to do with his suicide. Uh, what about Linsky's personal effects? Standard stuff. Wallet, keys, and a suicide note neatly sealed in a Ziploc bag. Sounds pretty convenient that you found them in a, I guess, waterproof uh, container, considering he was jumping off a bridge. I'd let you see it, but it's logged in as evidence. The handwriting, incidentally, was a hundred percent match. Uh, what can you tell me about Sylvia Linsky? As next of kin, she was notified and came in to identify her father's body. Didn't take it too well. One of the uniforms had to drive her home. Okay, I think uh, that's everything we can do now. Uh, let's head over to... Karolinski's house. So you're saying you're not going to take my case? Well, I don't want to take your money if I can't help you. Fine. Leave. <laughs> I'm just being straight up, okay? If you won't help me, I can do what I can on my own. It certainly won't be the first time. I charge $400 a day plus expenses. I have $1,000. If you can prove it wasn't suicide, I'll give you $10,000 later. It's a deal. Now you're gonna need to tell me everything you know so I can get started. Oh, I will. Thank you, Tex. Pointless trivia that I just learned. Uh, actress who played as Sylvia Linsky, Rebecca Brassard, uh, the first movie she starred in was Die Hard as a hostage. Tell me about Sylvia Linsky. All I want to do is find out the truth about my father's death. Uh, what about Tex Murphy? What do you think about him? I found a scrap of paper here with the address to your office written on it, no name. If my father didn't contact you, he must have gone to see someone else who works in your building. Before I came to see you, I checked the directory in the lobby, but didn't recognize any of the names. Uh, what can you tell me about Detective Eve Clements? She wasn't very friendly or helpful. I think she already made up her mind about my father's death. Uh, tell me about your dad, Carl Linsky. Why don't you think your father would commit suicide? He never would have considered it. He took good care of himself, and he often told me he was going to celebrate his 100th birthday by going skydiving. Well, do you know anybody who'd want to see him dead? No. No one. Everyone liked him. He was a kind man. Um, let's see. What about Linsky's personal effects? Detective Clement said you didn't pick up your father's personal effects. I really don't remember much after they asked me to identify the body. An officer drove me home and I haven't gone back. Well, they won't release the personal effects to me, and I'm hoping I'll be able to go through them so I can see if there's any kind of lead. When we're done, I'll go pick them up and meet you back here. Um, Linsky's surgery. My father mentioned that he had had surgery performed, but he said it was minor and didn't say any more about it. Um, what about his suicide note? I know the police confirmed that the note was in my father's handwriting, but it doesn't matter. I know it had to be a forgery. All right, I guess we're done. After I finished talking to Sylvia, she gave me a spare key and said I was free to look around the house. Oh, Sylvia was playing you like a kazoo. Well, more like a game of trouble, as I began to realize when I started poking around Linsky's house. Uh, 
Ah, uh, the bugs begin. That's okay. Uh, nope, the mouse cursor is back. All right, let us save our game. Uh, searching Carl's house. Ah, I see the first puzzle now. I've never been a fan of dominoes. Maybe. I figured the time wasted playing dominoes could be time well spent playing a rousing game of part cheesy. He knows what he likes. I can't blame him on that. Blackjack and dominoes and 21 horizontally, vertically, and diagonal. Oh, yeah. Lansky had some code number if the dominoes were placed in a special order of 21 in all directions. Let's worry about that a little bit. Someday, I'll get my own Dr. Watson. Then we can sit in chairs like these and discuss my brilliant powers of deduction. There we go. Looks like something a flapper would languish on. I think that also that comment there also kind of uh, sh like that comment about the flapper. You look at the way that Sylvia Linsky dresses and acts. You look at the way that Eve Clements is directed. Uh, is just that how this game is so much focused on being that kind of like 1930s um, detective novel, uh, despite the fact that it's set in the 2030s. Fire makes the living room feel quaint and cozy. And Linsky's taste in books ran the gamut from lackluster all the way to incomprehensible. I don't think there's going to be much to find in these kitchen cabinets. Probably not, Tex, but that doesn't mean you should not look. Especially since there's a puzzle involving bananas uh, that I slowed me down back in the day when I was playing this as a new game. And it was largely because I never picked up said bananas. Well, it's pretty clear Linsky didn't intend to starve himself to death. Standard kitchenware. Well, it's pretty clear Linsky... Um, let's... Yeah. Eh, nope. Ah, you are correct. There's always time for a new case. I wonder if this was for Linsky's personal use. If so, he may have had a little addiction. And... Let's see. Slide. There we go. Ah, there are the bananas. Sheesh. Even I know you don't keep bananas in the fridge. So you just take them out and put them in your inventory. All sorts of yummy foodstuffs. Because that becomes a puzzle element later on. Uh, let's recenter ourselves. Linsky's taste in books ran the gamut from. Right, we got a ladder. And another room. Let's go to this room first. No. Uh, no. T-shirts. I'm sure by the time I get to the end of the game, I will remember the button settings that I have laid out for myself. That's a nice sweater. Hmm. Shirts, pants, sweaters, nothing interesting. Hmm. Brand new cotton briefs. Larges, too. <laughs> I wonder if I oughta... Nah. Hmm. 
shirts, pants. All right. Hmm. There are only 31 pieces on the chessboard. Seems like an odd number. It is. That means that a piece is missing. I guess Linsky didn't plan on entertaining when he bought this bed. Hmm. I wonder if Linsky's little black book could be green. Looks like Linsky bookmarked the address for Dolores Lightbody. Hmm. Well, he also... Or Jason Lutz. Nice not want not. There we go. Looks like a half finished letter. Flowering trees in a fragrant meadow. This picture has to be really old. This photo certainly is an eyeful. Oh, the idea that there are uh, flowers anywhere in this world? In this post apocalyptic hole? Hmm. Huh. It appears Carl Linsky was about to dump someone named Dolores. Dear Dolores, I've decided that maybe it's best we don't see each other anymore. With everything that's going on in my life right now, I don't think I have the time or energy to maintain... ...even his attention to write that letter. Chairs. Scrap paper, notepad. Something on professional letterhead. This could be interesting. So Linsky signed a book deal and wasn't delivering the goods. The question is, why? Dr. Linsky, as per the dates delineated in the publisher authored agreement, we were you were to provide the following by September 20th, an outline of the manuscript, the first chapter. While we were and still are eager to publish your book tentatively titled Mind Over Matter and Analysis of Neurological Processes. As you did not respond to our previous communication, we assume that you have chosen to ignore the contractual deadline. For that reason, we must insist that you contact us immediately or return to us the cash advance in the amount of $22,000. Junk mail, catalog. Um, there we go. Walensky wasn't exactly a fashion animal. Most of these clothes look 20 years old. My deductive powers tell me that this ladder could lead to the attic. It's a shame credences went out of style. I wish I had two or three for my office. Typical packing boxes. My mother still hasn't forgiven me for quitting piano lessons. And again, she still refuses to believe the rumors about Liberace. Typical packing boxes. Hmm. Crates. Nothing special. Crates. Why did it have to be crates? Why would anyone keep something this handsome and ornamental hidden away in the attic? Oh, a bunch of neurology textbooks. <sighs> Intriguing. <laughs> that all about I don't know I hope this is just a space heater waste baskets often provide leads not this one however all right can I open any of these boxes the answer is no 
A lot of drawers to open up. This one is locked. Locked. Thank you, Tex. This could be worth looking at. Sylvia Linsky's credit report. Looks like money management isn't one of her strong points. Your credit history. So at the very least, she's honest about not really having money. Paper, pencils, paper clips, not much else. And what do we have here? I need to find a little something before I can open this. Oh. I can't actually even open any of these. I need to find a little something before I can open this. Looks like somebody was having fun with crayons. I wonder what Linsky did to this Blaine Warner person. Maybe he stole his tricycle. I'm going to get you, Linsky. You'll pay for what you did to me. Sincerely, Blaine Warner. Hmm. Nothing useful. All right. Let us save our game and play some blackjack with dominoes. We need to do 21 in every given direction. So how? what is the best way to do it? Hmm. In theory then it might be to have, like, uh, either the biggest number or the smallest number in the center. I'm going to have a theory that it's the biggest number. So this is 11. 11 plus 4 is 15, plus 6 is 21. Um, plus 3 is 14, plus 7 is 21. 6 plus 10 is 16 plus 5 is 21 5 plus 7 is 12 mm, already falling apart what is this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 that's 9 so yeah, I'm going to have to reset a lot of these around. So maybe that in the center doesn't work out. Maybe we can put that there. Or what we can do is have the biggest numbers on opposite side, on all these sides. That way we can just shift around the small numbers. So 3 plus 9 is 12 plus... Hmm. Plus uh, another 9, so that wouldn't work. 4 plus 9 is 13 plus 8 is 21. 11 plus 8 is 19. So this would only be 2. Okay, so maybe this strategy also isn't particularly working. 5 plus 9 is 14 plus 7. 7 plus 11 is 18 plus 3. 3 plus 10 is 13. Um... 
plus 8. That's 21. 8 plus... 9 is 17. 4 is 21. Did that work? 11 plus 4 is 15. Plus 6 is 21. 6 plus 5 is 11. Plus 10 is 21. Hmm. Is there a is there one of these that I just read wrong? Uh okay, because it doesn't satisfy that diagonal. That is what I did wrong. So what I probably need to do is I need to Hmm. Put a larger number at the center, smaller number. So it's 11 plus 3 is 14, uh, plus 7, and then. Let's say. 8 plus 11 is 19. No, that doesn't work. 5 plus 11 is 16, plus, mm, that doesn't work, 6 plus 11 is seven, uh, 17, plus 4, so 3 plus 4 is 7, that doesn't work, hmm, maybe not so large, Let, let's try, let's try having a smaller number in the middle, like a uh, number 3. 11 plus 3 is 14, plus 7 is 21. 10, no. Eight, mm, 6 plus 3 is 9. Oop, no. No. 8 plus 3 is no. In theory, I'll figure this out. Yeah, that doesn't work. Um, let's put a 4 in the middle. 11 plus 4 is 15, plus 6 is 21. And, let's see, 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 9 is 21. 9 plus, eh, that's too high. We want a higher number here. 8 plus 10 plus 4 is 14 plus 7. Mm. Yeah, th this having the smaller number in the center pushes the higher numbers on the outside. So let us put 7 there. And then the 4 is over here. So 11 plus 3 is 14, plus 7, do we, nope, we do, we've already used it. Eleven plus 5 is 16, then I need another 5. Let's see, 11 and 3 is 14, and 7 is 21. Eleven and six is seventeen and four. Eleven and five is sixteen. No, that doesn't work. Hmm. 
I need to come up with three solutions for adding 11 to something else to reach 21. So three, four, and six, 11, six. That is that. 11 and five and five is 21, so that can't be that. Unless, hmm, I use something else. Un unless I place 11 somewhere where it only affects, is there a place where it only affects two solutions? I don't think so. Oh yeah, right over here because it only does vertically and it doesn't affect any diagonals, which means that 11 only affects uh, the horizontal and vertical. In which case, uh, I would use the four and the three. So 11 plus 14, 13, sorry, 11 plus three is 14, plus seven is 21, 11 plus four is 15, plus six, is 21. 4 plus 8 is 12. Plus 9 is 21. 9 plus 7 is 18? No. 9 plus 7 is 60. Uh, plus 6 is 21. So that doesn't work. Uh, 6 plus 7 is 16, plus 5 is 21, 5 plus 4 is 9, so that does not work. So let us swap the 3 there, and the 7 there. So that's 11 plus 3 is 14, plus 7 is 21, um, two, 4 plus 11 is 15, plus 6 is 21, 6 plus 3 is 9, that does not work. What if it's 11 plus 6 is 17, plus 4 is 21, 3 plus 6 is 9, no, that doesn't work. So ultimately, I need to figure out 11 plus 10 is 21. What two numbers always reach 10? So that's 7 and 3, 8 and 2, but we do not have a 2, 9 and 1, but we do not have a 1, 2 and, oh wait, no, that's 4, 4 and 6. 5 and 5, but we do not have another 5, and that's just 10. So these are the only two solutions combined with the 11 to reach 21. So ultimately, it is entirely about the placement of these solutions that affects the game. So what if we put the 7 in the center, the 6 in the bottom, 6 plus 7 is 13. 13 plus 8 is 21. 6 plus 11 is 17. Plus 4, 6 plus 11 plus 7 is 18. Plus 3, 8 plus 4 is 12. Plus 9 is 21. 8 plus 3 is 11, plus 10 is 21. A light is flashing by the 4, the 9, and the 8. These three numbers are probably useful. All right.
let's write that down for later. I don't know how they'll be useful. Uh, because unfortunately I still don't have a key. Locked. I'll need to find a little something before I can open this. And I guess I'm done, I think. I'm done here, maybe? Because I don't think there's anything for me to access otherwise. That said, we do have an address to go to, that being uh, Dolores Lightbody's house. So let us stop here for the night. Next time we will go pay her a visit.